Facebook uh, Live has a new interface, so it took me a few minutes to uh, get it back going again to the point where like, I had to switch it back to the old way of doing it. So um, anyway, for those of you that do live videos, let me know how you um, use the new interface. Anyway, I hope everybody's doing well, hanging in there in the middle of hanging out at home all the time. Um, I read um, the first couple of chapters in this book, Kevin M. Three-Headed Alien, yesterday, so I thought I'd come back today and uh, read chapters three, four, and five. This is a um, continuation of the book I read uh, last week, uh, Kevin and the Seven Lions, and this expands the story and tells the story of Kevin and his friends as once they find out um, that Kevin is a writer and all the things that they want to uh, creative things that they want to do with his writing. So um, thanks for spending a few minutes with me. I hope you're doing well. Um, if you want to get the book, it's available on Kindle and paperback, and there's a link in the uh, description. Okay. Chapter three, new plot development. Kevin continued the story about Greybeard. No, I don't think his gun is anything special. I think the battle just continues with him standing at the front of the boat, staring at Captain Kurtz. Explosions are going on all around him. People are running back and forth, all crazy-like, and, and Greybeard and Kurtz just continue to stare each other from their boats. Then what? How do they kill each other? Who wins this fight? Jared was genuinely curious. I don't know yet. You come up with an idea, Kevin pointed at Jared. I did. You shot it down. Okay, how about this? They are staring at each other from their ships when a cannonball from Kurtz's ship hits a sail in Greybeard's ship, knocking it over with a humongous bang. I saw this on an old movie my dad was watching the other day. The mainsail came crashing down, landing on people, making it impossible to control where the ship goes. So when Greybeard looks up, to see his, his ship has been hit, he turns to uh, he turns to direct all cannons to fire and orders all the remaining pirates on the ship to grab their guns and aim at Kurt's ship. Jared jumped on board with this new plot development. No, 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 no. They don't fire their guns. Instead, they get into lifeboats and start rowing toward the other boat. Their guns won't reach from the main boat, so Greybeard ordered his men into the boats to attack the Falcon. Ooh, I like that. But Greybeard should be on one of those boats. He wouldn't stay on the damaged ship. He wants to go get Captain Kurt so bad that he is willing to abandon his ship to get him. He hates him that much. Kevin got more excited as he thought about this new storyline. He could see it happening in his head. It made him smile. Well, are you going to write this down, Jared asked? I guess I should. Kevin said, grabbing a pencil before starting to write in his notebook. All the other times I just sat and wrote without thinking it, uh, without talking it uh, through out loud. So what other stories do you have in your notebook? Well, I have several. I have one about a submarine being attacked by a sea monster, and one with a star cruiser being chased by other spaceships, and I just finished one about being a lion tamer. We should make a video. A what? We should make a movie. Let's make one of your stories. We can put it on the internet and be famous. Jared's eyes lit up with the idea. That's it. I'm going to go home, get my brother's camera ready. I'll see you tomorrow. Jared ran out the door. Kevin didn't even have a chance to say no to Jared. He was a man on a mission. Chapter 4, The Flying Saucer. There were crickets chirping on this summer night. Kevin reclined in the grass, looking up at the sky. Suddenly, he was blinded by a bright white light. He covered up his eyes and turned away. After a minute or two, the light began to change, and he saw something round floating toward him. It was a spaceship. He was too scared to run. This can't be happening, he thought. The spaceship hovered above his head. Kevin reached out, but he couldn't touch it. The spaceship seemed to be getting bigger. It seemed to be getting closer to the ground, but it was hard to tell with the blinding light all around him. A gray shape began to walk slowly toward him. It reached out a hand to him. Kevin, thank you for your riding, but it's time to give me your attention. Kevin was taken away from the spaceship in his head back to Ms. Calvin's third grade class. He closed his journal and slipped it inside his desk. A few feet away, Jared looked at Kevin and realized he had been writing. Next to Kevin, Sarah Rose, a red-haired girl with freckles, watched him put away his journal. She noticed Jared looking in Kevin's directions. She knew something was up and had to 
find out what it was. But first, she had to finish her science graph, so she measured the frog on her desk and recorded its length in centimeters. She leaned toward Kevin. You're supposed to measure the frog from head to foot and by straightening its leg. Here, let me show you. She reached over to take his frog in measuring tape. I know what I'm doing. Stay at your desk, snapped Kevin. Sarah returned to her desk and finished her work. The lunchroom was a loud place. Mrs. Calvin's class had three tables assigned to them. The students usually sat with the same group. That's how third grade works. Today, Sarah was going to break the rules and upset a lot of people. She sat next to Kevin. Kevin paused in mid-bite and stared at Sarah as she sat down next to him. Jared pointed at her and shouted, You don't sit here! Kara, a blonde-haired girl in a purple dress, called to Sarah from another table. Hey, why are you sitting there? Sarah didn't respond to any of them. She just looked at Kevin. What were you writing during science? You were supposed to be working on your frog graph. Kevin almost threw up. I was working on the frog graph. I mean, Mrs. Calvin told you to stop writing, and then you put away that journal she gave you. What were you writing? Sarah was getting insistent. None of your business. Kevin was sure he was going to throw up. I just want to know. I'm trying to be nice. You know, like Miss Rivers says, Miss Rivers, the school counselor, was always giving lessons on being friendly and nice to the people at school. He was writing our movie, Jared shouted at Sarah. Kevin choked on a sandwich. You guys are making a movie? I want it. I want to get in on it, said Sarah. I'm not making a movie. It's none of your business, you nosy snot. Kevin didn't normally call people's names, but this was getting out of hand. Yes, he's writing our movie, Jared said, ignoring Kevin and the kicks underneath the table coming from Kevin's side. We're going to put it online and become famous. You guys are making a movie, asked Sam Ford, a quiet kid sitting next to Jared. When are you guys going to do this, asked T.J. Williams, a tall, lanky boy who was the last kid at the table to join in the conversation. You guys want to do it this weekend, Jared asked. Kevin just sat there watching his life disappear before his eyes. Then blessedly, Mrs. Calvin called for the class to line up. Kevin was still speechless. Chapter 5, call the whole thing off. Why did you do that? I don't want to make a movie, Kevin shouted at Jared as they walked home from the bus. I didn't even want other people knowing about this. Oh, come on. Don't get angry. Everybody heard Miss Calvin tell you to put away the journal. We all saw you writing in it when you stopped paying attention in class. So get over it. Kevin realized that everything Jared just said was true. Kevin mostly kept to himself when he daydreamed. He didn't include other people on purpose. It never occurred to him that his classmates might have seen Mrs. Calvin give him the journal to write in. The class definitely had seen him get into plenty of trouble daydreaming in class. That had been going on since Miss Seals' kindergarten's class, kindergarten class. Kevin didn't do any better at home. His mom often found him looking away as if he was watching a movie. His parents yelled, scolded, and begged him to focus on his homework or his chores. They had taken away candy, bribed him, and finally given up. Kevin was a hopeless daydreamer. Then one day they discovered Kevin, then one day they discovered that Kevin was in his room writing. Not only that, he was focused. He wasn't just staring at the wall. He was writing. After several weeks of Kevin of watching Kevin zone out and stop paying attention in class, Miss Kelvin had given him a journal and asked him to write, start writing down his daydreams. Kevin took to it like a fish to water. Mrs. Calvin wouldn't allow him to write all day. Three minutes was all he got. And three minutes is never enough when you are writing about pirates and spaceships, aliens, submarines, dinosaurs, and lions. So he would con continue to write at home. His parents were confused. Kevin stayed in his room all the time. He was always at his desk writing. And he seemed to enjoy it. Then he read them a story in which he was the main character. All of his stories were written that way. Kevin was the main character, the adventurer, the pilot, the lion tamer. That's what made it fun. What else could it be? All of those things. On top of that, he could be all of those things without anyone else knowing that he put himself as the lead in each of his stories. Now, everyone in the third grade was going to know. This was going to be a disaster. After lunch, the rest of the day went slowly. Even P.E. didn't help. He had to stop Jared from continuing with this idea. Kevin decided that for once he was going to act like the lead in his own life, not just 
in his stories. If he could imagine himself tra training lions, then he should learn from his characters. He was going to stop Jared. And we'll stop there for today. So parents or students, uh, remember that when you're writing a story or making a story, this is a chance for you to be the star of the story, uh, to be the star of your own creation. Um, and so this is a chance for you to be able to do it. So I'd love for you to be able to write those, those stories where you're the main character. What would you do in your story? What, what would it be like for you to be a lion tamer or a fighter jet pilot or a famous movie star? That's a chance for you to be able to write. I hope everybody's doing well and hanging in there. Um, everybody have a good uh, afternoon. I hope to see you later. Um, if you would like, go ahead and uh, maybe share this uh, video or leave a comment uh, to let me know about your stories. If you, your students or your children happen to write a, a story, I'd love to be able to see them. All right, everybody have a great afternoon. Thank you.